Good morning, everybody. Oh, okay. Thank you. <laughs> Let's try that again. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Welcome to another beautiful Sunday. It's, uh, for some of us, it's been a stressful week. For some of us, it's been a great week. And for every one of us, we're all glad to be here this morning. I doing the announcement this morning, and um, we have a few announcements for you. Today is CBWC Sunday. For those of us who are not familiar with the term, uh, the acronym, CBWC stands for Canadian Baptist of Western Canada. Again, that's Canadian Baptist of Western Canada. So that's the body we, as a church, belong to. And you can see, you can read more about the CBWC on this pamphlet that's in, in the bulletin. We just want to extend a warm welcome to those who are visiting us for the first time today. If you're a visitor, we welcome you. Welcome to North Mount Baptist Church. There's stu um, there are, um, stuff you can fill up fill out actually in the uh, pew in front of you. If you want to fill that out, that would be great, or you can fill out the guest book in the foyer. We'll look forward to meeting you. Um, for now, until Christmas, we're helping out, as a church, we're helping out the Calgary Food Bank. So if you're uh, coming to church starting from next Sunday, feel free to bring in a non-perishable item that we can donate to the Calgary Food Bank. Christmas is a time where we give, so let's express our thanks given to God for giving us life and for giving us all we have by sharing what we have with those who are unable to for them. We started today the Christmas Ensemble that uh, Vic and Vi started, but unfortunately there was no one that showed up today, so please, in case you forgot, the Christmas Ensemble practice that's every Sunday, 9.30 a.m., just before the service. So, okay, Vic, do you want to talk a little bit about it? I just wanted to just mention something, yeah. I always like to talk, so I, I, I just wanted to let you know that uh, today was our first practice for the Christmas Ensemble, and it was a really exciting time. I sang a solo. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody showed up. Now, this is a list of the people that said that they would come. So I'm going <laughs> to... Do I dare read it? No. no. <laughs> I've got your name. You have said you would join us. And I was talking to a lady that I didn't know whether she would be coming but uh, she said she is now able and she is willing to come and she's gonna be coming next Sunday. But uh, I've got your name, just remember that. And uh, I'm going to put it right where I pray every night. And so if you feel something coming down on you, you'll know what it is, okay? See you next Sunday at 9.30, please, okay? Thank you. All yours. Thank you, Vic. So, <clears throat> Vic has your name. <laughs> so, um, one other thing I wanted to mention is the drummer uh, for ages 13 to 16. Because we've not had anyone attend so far, we're just going to suspend it for now. And thank you, Kyra, for coming every Thursday uh, to wait for people. But if you know of anyone between ages 13 and 16 and interested um, in drama, please feel free to contact Kyra. And also, uh, Christianity 101 will be suspended for now since we have the Christmas Ensemble standing at the same time every Sunday. Thank you very much, Vic and Vi. And um, also, we'll be providing Christmas bags for 10 or so shut-ins for Christmas. The, the gifts can include hand lotion, candy, Kleenex, toothpaste, toothbrushes, pens and pencils. Please, no soap. And you can deliver this to the office by Tuesday. 
December 6th for packaging. And uh, delivery will be taking place after December 8th. So feel free to contact Laura Taylor at 403-226-1677 in case you're unable to write that down. It's actually in your bulletin as well. And uh, for CBWC Sunday, we're partners with um, Suraj and David Nacho. They are partners, um, partners in mission. And so, like I was saying about CBWC, this is the Canadian Baptist of Western Canada. I just wanted to say a little bit about the Banff uh, Pastor and Spouse Retreat just almost a couple of weeks ago now. It feels like it was ages ago. It was a beautiful time. And I, this time, um, usually the churches actually support the pastors and spouses to this particular retreat. But this time around, the CBWC, and that's part of what they do. They help as resource for churches like ours. And we, as part of CBWC, they decided to send my family and I to the conference this year. And I can tell you, it was a beautiful time. Not only with the speakers and the music, everything was wonderful. In fact, my son Tobias said, no, we're not going home on the last day because it was that beautiful. So CBW is a Sunday as today and just take a time, take some time when you pray to remember the Canadian Baptist of Western Canada. Also, um, the weekly events continue except for the youth group. The youth group has been suspended again um, till next year and if you have any information or you have any questions, please feel free to contact Bill. Kara or myself will be, will be happy to provide you with those information. <clears throat> so the insane, the next insane is December 4th and the Seventh Heaven Gospel Choir uh, is, will be performing that day. Also the seniors Christmas luncheon is coming up on December night, 12 o'clock. Everyone is invited to this. Yes, it does say seniors Christmas launching, but everyone is invited to this launching. And uh, finally, I just want to talk a little bit about the cafe. I want to thank everyone who's been coming. Again, this is a fun time where people can just sit down, have some coffee together, chat, play games together, and even just meet new people. If you have um, plans to meet somebody for coffee during the week and it's in the evening, please feel free to invite them to the cafe. And while we're doing that, why don't we just stand up and welcome somebody into the service this morning. Just turn around, say hello. Welcome to North Mountain Baptist Church. We love that you are here and we're happy that you're here. It's okay. As we head back to our seats, just think of God in this place. Shall we pray? Heavenly Father, we thank you for this morning. We bless you for your presence in this place. And we thank you for we know in your goodness and your mercy, you're with us already. And Father, we pray as we start the service, the grace and power to worship you in spirit and in truth, Father, give unto us. Continue to be with us. Let your spirit fill this place. For we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. And um, Bill and Michael, welcome back. Bill and Michael actually went away for a week for Pastor Roque and they are back this week and um, just want to thank them for walking on their website. If you've not been on their website, it's embassychurch.ca. God bless.
What's up, my Jesus? Thanks, Gabriel. Just a couple more things. There's a lot of announcements this time of year. There is a council meeting briefly right after the service downstairs. If the council members could meet briefly, we just have one important decision to make. And then uh, after our coffee fellowship, we have our congregational meeting. So please uh, make sure you remember those things. And if you're visiting, you're welcome to sit in on the meeting. It goes very quickly, but uh, you can hear about what's happening in our church. Um, I think most of the other things you can see in, oh, and deacons, it's not in the bulletin, but we're meeting on Tuesday night as well. I'll keep that in mind. All right. It's time for us to sing together. Let's stand together and sing number 435, God of Grace and Glory. We have a phenomenal God. Let's worship him together. God of grace and God of glory, God the people for thy power, crown thy name, church and story, bring her back to glorious power, grant us wisdom. remain standing for our call to worship number 569 thirsting for God why are you in despair O my soul and why have you become disturbed within me hope in God for I shall again praise him for the help of his presence deep calls to deep at the sound of thy waterfalls all thy breakers and thy waves have rolled over me the Lord will command his loving kindness in the daytime, and his song will be with me in the night, a prayer to the God of my life. Why are you in despair, O my soul, and why have you become disturbed within me? Hope in God, for I shall yet praise him, the help of my countenance and my God. We have so much to praise our God for. Let's continue to sing 10,000 Reasons and a whole lot more. Just follow on the screen. The Lord of my soul, oh my soul, worship 
worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. The sun comes up, the sun comes up, it's a new day dawning. It's time to sing Your song again. Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me, may be singing when the evening comes. Bless the Lord, bless my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. Worship your holy name. You're rich in love and you're slow to anger. Your name is great and your heart is kind. For all your goodness I will keep on singing. Ten thousand reasons for my heart to find. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Worship His holy name. Sing like never before, oh my soul. I'll worship Your holy name. And on that day when my strength is failing, the end draws near and my time has come. Still my soul will sing your praise unending Ten thousand reasons live forevermore Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul Worship His holy name Sing like never before, O oh my soul I'll worship your holy name Amen. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice, rejoice. Rejoice, and again I say rejoice, 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 and again I say rejoice. Amen. You may be seated. It's time for us to pray together. And uh, God continues to answer our prayers, to help us. Um, Curtis and Elaine, have been praying for them for a while that they'd get somebody to rent their place. They got a renter. So in these times, that's a good thing. God is good. It's good to hear back from you what God is doing too. And uh, God has been great. And um, it's been encouraging. We've been praying about reaching out. And it's neat that God has given us people that are helping us. And it's nice to have Bill and Michael and, and um, Gabriel and many of you helping us to reach out. So God is good. Let's go to prayer and let's uh, thank him for his goodness. God, as we enter into this Advent season, we are reminded that you are a great God who loves us and so much that you sent your son to be born taking the risk of a fragile baby in this world. and God, as we look forward to this season, I pray that with Advent starting next Sunday, we pray that you would 
Give us the courage to not just think about the presence, but to think about what you did in all your glory, coming to this earth and humbling yourself. And God, we're so thankful for the way you continue to answer our prayers. And thank you for providing a renter. Thank you for giving us people to help us in this place. Thank you for every person in this room that is reaching out and sharing your love to the people around them. And God, we're continually amazed at what you are doing. We continue to hear good stories from the Middle East of thousands of people coming to know you out of the Muslim world. And God, we are so thankful that you are a great God who cares, and who loves. And as we sang earlier, we pray that all this madness of fighting would come to an end as people humble themselves and fall under your leadership. You're a God who brings peace, who brings joy, who brings love, who brings grace. And God, I just pray this morning as we worship that you would draw us into your presence. Just soften all the rough edges. Give us the courage to be gracious. Help us to move past all the frustrations in our worship to just focusing on you, the author and perfecter of our faith. And God, we are amazed at what you continue to do and how patient you are with us. And as we look out into this community, we recognize that every day you long for the people around us to come to know you. God, give us the courage to follow your lead, to listen to your spirit and to move out. And so, Lord, as we continue to worship, give us joyful hearts and teach us. In Jesus' name, amen. It's time for this morning's offering. If the ushers would like to come to the front. seated. Fred's going to come and read the scriptures for us. Good morning, everybody. Um, with my eyesight being what it is, I probably will have difficulty with this. <laughs> I'm reading out of the NIV Bible, page 1222, Galatians 5, 19 to 25. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. 
sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery, idol, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with it, its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit. Let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying each other. Thanks, Fred. While we're singing the next song, those that need to take advantage of the nursery are welcome to take their kids down for that. And we're going to sing together number 491. And you may just stay seated as we prepare to look into God's word. Number 491, Jesus, I come.
Amen. We want to learn from Jesus this morning. For those of you who are visiting or are new here, we've been had a, just a brief break from the book of Luke as we look at different ways to deal with stress. And this morning we want to come back to the book of Luke and we're going to be looking towards the end of chapter 12 and the beginning of chapter 13. So if you have your Bibles, you can get that out. We're talking a little bit about making the right choices. Many years ago, when President Jackson was in the, the president of the States, there was an urgent letter written to him. It reads as follows. The canal system of this country is being threatened by the spread of a new form of transportation known as railroads. The federal government must preserve the canals for the following reasons. One, if boats are supplanted by railroads, serious unemployment will result. Captains, cooks, drivers, repairmen, and lock tenders will be left without means of livelihood. Not to mention the numerous farmers now employed in growing hay for horses. Two, boat builders would suffer and tow line Whip and harness makers would be left destitute. Three, canal boats are absolutely essential to the defense of the United States. In the event of the unexpected trouble with England, the Erie Canal would be the only means by which we could ever move the supply so vital to waging modern war. As you may well know, Mr. President, railroad carriages are pulled at the enormous speed of 15 miles per hour by engines which, in addition to endangering life and limb of passengers, roar and snort their way through the countryside, setting fire to crops, scaring the livestock, and frightening women and children. Surprised men aren't afraid either. The Almighty certainly never intended that people should travel at such break breakneck speed. Sincerely yours, Martin Van Buren, Governor of New York. Now, we kind of laugh a little bit and chuckle at this. We've seen 2020 hindsight is pretty good, and we, we've seen that things didn't fall apart. But it's amazing how we are making decisions every day based on our inability to see the future. But sometimes we know what is right to do, but we still make the wrong choice in the heat of the moment. Several years ago, Dr. Ruth Berenda conducted an experiment in which they invited 10 teenagers into a room where three charts were displayed. Each chart had three lines of different lengths. The group members were asked to raise their hands when the teacher pointed to the longest line. Sounds pretty simple. One teacher, in, or sorry, one teen in each of the groups of 10 did not know what was going on. But the other nine were instructed to point and raise their hands at the second longest line. The lone teenager frequently, when the teacher pointed to the second longest line, the, lo the lone teenager frequently got confused and cast a wrong vote because the other nine were choosing it. And Dr. Brenda's data revealed that 75% of teens allowed peer pressure to override their own better judgment. Now for some of us who are older, we get it, we've seen it. Well, what does it take to make good choices over bad ones? If you were called to make a choice today that would last for eternity, what choice would you make? If we look, turn in your Bibles now to Luke chapter 12, and we're going to start reading at verse 49, where Jesus gives them some very strong words to encourage the people to make right choices, important choices that were critical to make right then. Verse 49, I have come to bring fire on the earth. Wow. Wow and how I wish it were already kindled. But I have a baptism to undergo, and how distressed I am until it is completed. Do you think I came to bring peace on earth? No, I tell you, but division. 
From now on, there will be five and one family divided against each other, three against two and two against three. They will be divided father against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law. He said to the crowd, when you see a cloud rising in the west, immediately you say, it's going to rain. And it does. And when the south wind blows, you say it's going to be hot. And it is. Hypocrites. You know how it, to interpret the appearance of the earth and the sky. How is it that you don't know how to interpret the present time? Why don't you judge for yourself what is right? As you are going with your adversary to the magistrate, try hard to reconcile to him on the way, or he may drag you off to the judge. And the judge will turn you over to the officer, and the officer throw you into prison. I tell you, you will not get out until you've paid the last penny. Now there were some present at that time who told Jesus about the Galileans whose blood Pilate had mixed with their sacrifice. Jesus answered, do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the tower in Siloam fell on them. Do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will perish. Then he told this parable. A man had a fig tree planted in the vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, for three years now, I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year and I'll dig around it in fertilizer. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. Now, it wasn't going to be much longer before Jesus stopped speaking so much to the crowds and more to his disciples. But as Jesus moved towards the cross, as he sensed the urgency of his time on earth, he speaks very strongly to the crowds and to Israel to repent, to turn to God in their hearts, to make good choices, even though they're very difficult. And Jesus points out very clearly how difficult some of these decisions can, can make, that we need to make. And so when he comes to this verse, he talks about this baptism of fire, and he wishes it would be done already. And he's talking about him dying on the cross as this baptism of fire. This longing that Jesus had for everything to be completed. And at the cross, this battle would be over. And the way for purity to avoid punishment would be sealed. And he longs for the people not to wait to make their decision. And now he challenges the crowds with several different decisions. The first thing I see him saying is that now is a time to make a decision away from the crowds. And I don't know what the crowd is around you. Maybe somebody you live with. Maybe your schoolmates. Maybe your family. Whatever it is. But it is so easy to just go along with the crowd and not make difficult decisions even though we know what is right. And Jesus said, if you choose me, it's not going to bring peace. And of course, all the Israelites, as they're listening to Jesus, would say, whoa, 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 wait a second. Isn't the Messiah supposed to be the Prince of Peace? They all knew passages in the Old Testament that talked about when this pre Prince of Peace would come, that all the spears would be beaten into plowshares, that there would be peace, the lion would lie down with the lamb. And they're thinking, what is Jesus talking about? There's no peace. He's not talking about peace. And Jesus is saying, in case you think that following the right path is going to create peace immediately, think again. When you accept me, it's going to create some antagonism because not everybody appreciates the truth. It means choosing the narrow road when everybody's going on the wider path. It means choosing to love even when people don't love you back. 
to love in spite of the circumstances. And if you really want to choose heaven as your treasure, instead of living for money, it's going to mean tough choices. And when you make these tough choices, one thing is going to happen. People are going to be against you. And if you are standing firmly for truth and nobody is against you, chances are you're not speaking it out clearly. Chances are you're hiding a little bit. It's a fact that people will be against you if you stand for truth. And the moment Jesus says, the moment you choose me, people in your own family even will turn away from you. You know, in the Middle East, if you are to choose Christ, it means your family disowns you. It's a difficult decision. And we read stories of Muslims coming to the faith who give these agonizing stories of families leaving them and shunning them, sometimes even killing them. Imagine that heart-wrenching decision. But they are choosing to make it because they know it's the right choice. When you experience the love of Christ and the power of God, how can you give up? How can you give anything else up? You've got to go for it. And yet even in our community, when we really choose to stand up for what's right, we still make enemies. And it's becoming more so that way. I remember a few years ago, a very dear old lady who saw my wife and I as this wonderful couple. And we began conversations and we enjoyed some time together. But when I expressed my belief that Jesus was the only way to God, and discover truth in its fullest, needless to stay, she stopped visiting us. No, in this country, people may not kill us for our faith, but choosing to serve Christ will separate people from us. And in case that bothers you, listen to what Christ follows up with. He also says, that now is the time not only to make choices, to move away from the crowd, but also to settle your debts. In verse 54, Jesus turns his attention to a subject that we talk about almost every time we meet. It's the weather. And Jesus says, you know, when you look around, just look at the clouds. You can usually tell by looking up in the sky what the weather's gonna be like. And often we joke about, you know, the weather forecasts you know, somebody says, what's the weather? Uh, feels like it's snowing out. <laughs> you know, we just look and you can tell. Or you see the Chinook Arch and you know the warm weather's coming. And Jesus says, you guys are so good at seeing what the weather's like. And yet, you can't see what God is doing in the urgency of the times. And he uses the illustration of a debtor's prison. You see, in their day, if you didn't pay your debts, you went to jail. I think it would probably be good if we brought that back a little bit in some circles. But the only way for your relatives to come up with the money to pay your debt was to go to the person, pay it back, before you would ever see the light of day again. If your relatives did not pay the debt back, you would never get out of jail. And so Jesus' point is simply this. When you are facing a debt, it makes sense that you would obviously go to that person and try to make restitution before you have to go to jail. Otherwise, you're stuck there. So why not get it done? Do whatever it takes to make the right decision before we die. A grim warning. Thirdly, he says, now is the time to make a choice for eternity. And unto the, up until this point, there are many people in the crowd that were sitting kind of smug. It's like, yeah, we chose the right thing. We don't have any debts. And we're children of Abraham. We're God's children, so we're fine. So I don't know what Jesus is talking to, but he's obviously talking to those sinners over there. And then Jesus says to them, <clears throat> in case you think that this is only for the murderers or the Gentiles or the non-church, Jesus draws their attention to a deeper issue in chapter 13, verse 1. He says that 
these murdered Galileans aren't were sinners. See, because they thought that with this Tower of Siloam falling on these people, they must have sinned worse than us or that wouldn't have happened. Or these Galileans whose blood had been sacrificed terribly by Pilate. They said, well, obviously those must have been bad people because that's the way they thought. If you suffered more, obviously you were a sinner more. And because we're not suffering, we're obviously better people. And Jesus says that's not the way it works. Jesus said that good f happens to bad and good people, and bad happens to both kinds of people. The rain falls on both. But Jesus says, don't make excuses for your good fortune as a measure of your godliness. And in a rich country like ours, it's easy to be deceived into believing that because we feel blessed, that somehow we are better that somehow we're doing what's right. And sometimes we deceive ourselves into thinking that just because we're here on Sunday morning, we're doing the right thing. Obviously, we're pretty good people. And we hear it all over our country where people say, you know, I'm a pretty good moral person. I'm not killing anybody or stealing. You know, I'm, I'm a good person. I'm good to go. God's obviously going to let me in. And here's the crux of the matter in verse um, 3 and 5 of chapter 13. He says, these people did not suffer because they were great sinners. But unless you repent, unless we repent and change our direction, we also will suffer an eternal separation from God. Some may suffer, but we're all going to die. And then what? So what does repentance look like? Which brings me to the fourth point. He says, now is a time to make a choice to go and bear fruit. And he gives this example of this vineyard where this fig tree is watered and cared for and cultivated and everything's wonderful about this tree is growing nicely, but there's no fruit. There's no fruit. And Jesus says to these people that there needs to be fruit or that tree needs to be cut down. In other words, the most important thing as Christians, if we say we believe, if we say we've repented, then there must be fruit in our lives. It needs to show up. If nobody can tell that we are Christians, where is the fruit? Isaiah chapter 32 says, the fruit of righteousness will be peace. The effect of righteousness will be quietness and confidence forever. How are the relationships around you? Is there peace? Are we peacemakers? In Matthew 7, it says that the fruit was not seen, was being obedient to God, God's will. Being obedient to God's will is what the fruit is. Matthew 21 implies that good fruit is that where we see the kingdom of God growing. If we're not seeing the kingdom of God growing, where is the fruit? Galatians 5 that we read earlier says the fruit of the Spirit is love and joy and peace and patience and kindness and goodness and faithfulness and gentleness and self-control. How's your self-control in your private life? How's your self-control when you meet an enemy? How is your patience? How's your graciousness? Is the Spirit of God visible in your relationships around you? You see, the fruit that Jesus was looking for was simply an extension of the vine, of Him abiding in us. The more Jesus dwells in us, the more it comes out and is shown. If there is a good vine, a good tree, it will produce fruit. That's the nature of fruit trees. And if God is a God of forgiveness and we are His children, then we should be seen as children who forgive. And God is a God who loves, so loving, that we also need to freely express love. And the fruit should be easy, easy to see, easy to pick. And Jesus said, my followers are known by their fruit. Let's not get sidetracked by the fact that we might be blessed or good people. Is are we showing fruit in our lives? 
To know Jesus is to make him consciously available to everybody around us every day. Don't sacrifice the eternal for the immediate. In 1986, two electrical engineers in the control room in Chernobyl, nuclear power plant, performed an unauthorized experiment. See, they were trying to see how many, how long a turbine would free wheel when they took the power off. And in order to get the reactor down to that kind of power where they could perform the test, they had to override several different alarm systems. And one by one, the computers would come up and say, stop, don't do this. It's dangerous, don't go any further. And one by one, they shut them off. Well, you know the results. It was one of the new greatest nuclear fallouts this world has seen from the largest industrial accident ever to occur. When we choose to ignore the warning signs and go on without bearing fruit, it says, Jesus says, those trees get cut down. Those are severe warnings. Once there was a spider who built a shiny, beautiful web in an old house. And he kept it clean and shiny and kept taking the bugs off so that others could see that it was safe to land there. And one day a, a fly buzzed by suspiciously. And the spider said, spider said, you know, come on in and have a little seat. But the fairly intelligent spy, uh, fly said, are you kidding me? I'm not going to sit there. There's no other flies here. Why would I want to sit there? I'm not sitting there. And so he flew around the house until he saw this strip of paper with all kinds of flies on it. He said, I'm going there. People, popular decisions often draw people, but it's a deadly trap. There are plenty of things we can look around at and see that everybody's doing it, and yet it's wrong. Jesus says that the good path is narrow, and few find it. I trust that we'll be one of those few. There's a story of an old Persian general who used to permit the people who were condemned to death one final choice. Either face a firing squad or pass through the big black door. Then general would ask them the final question. What's it going to be? The firing squad or the big black door? wasn't an easy question, but the prisoners would often grit their teeth and choose the firing squad over the big black door. And after one of these times, one of his aides came to him and said, you know, they always seem to choose firing squad over the back door, black door, like what's, what's going on with that? And he said, well, People tend to prefer what they know to what they don't know. And they're afraid of what they don't know. Well, what's behind the black door? The general said, freedom. They can walk through. But I've only known a few brave men who are choose to take it. You know, a lot of times people look at the freedom of Jesus as this big black door that if they give in to Jesus, that somehow this world is going to be a prison, all these religious rules and how terrible it's going to be. And yet for those of us who have tasted the goodness of God, we know there's incredible freedom in Jesus. He loves us and he longs to give us good things. I want to encourage you today to choose to wake, walk away from the crowds, walk away from the comfort that you've longed for. And just choose Jesus and watch how he'll give you freedom that you've never experienced before. Let's pray. Lord, I just thank you so much for the freedom that comes through what you did for us on the cross. God, the world doesn't like a message that says there's only one way. But truth is truth. And God, we come to you to follow you. And in you, we experience incredible love incredible freedom and joy and goodness and blessing. God, I just pray for each person here who has never made that decision. That through your spirit, you would speak to them this morning and give them the courage to choose you. I pray this in Jesus' precious name.
Amen. I want to encourage you that if you want to make that decision or you feel the Spirit of God tugging on your heart, to just come and talk to me briefly afterwards. Let's close this morning by singing number 483. 483. The Savior is waiting. Let's stand together. The Savior is waiting to enter your heart. Why don't you let him come in? There's nothing in this world to keep you apart. What is your answer to him? Time after time, he has waited before. And now he is waiting again To see if you're willing to open the door Oh, how he wants to come in If you'll take a step, oh Savior my friend You'll find his arms open wide. Receive him and all of your darkness will end. Within your heart he'll abide. Time after time he has waited before. And now he is waiting again. To see if you're willing to open the door Oh, how he wants to come in Amen We have a great God who just wants to welcome you But he needs you to choose the truth To choose to follow him Let's go this week in the grace of Jesus and live the truth, to choose to take the narrow road. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated.